Hey there guys, uh, so welcome to a lovely deck profile uh, of my Soul Saver Dragon deck. So this is actually deck made top 8 um, at a Dark Sphere uh, Spring Fest. Unfortunately as you know about Vanguard, um, currently we have no more happening because of all these cancellations. But this was the one I did get to attend. Um, and well I did and I, I'm i really glad I got to because it was very fun, it was entertaining and I thought I wasn't going to do the deck profile originally um, but in the end of my, in the, in the, yeah, at the end of the day I changed my mind. Um, so before we get into it as you probably noticed my mat is rather quite different um, so yeah so very very nice mat I'll um, hopefully show you a full picture uh, soon. But for now, let's focus on the deck and then I'll talk about my matchups. Uh, so obviously, um, we've got to have our starter. Um, they all do the same thing, obviously. Uh, let me just give it a nice proper zoom in so now we can focus on the effects. But it's not like it's very entertaining, different effects we've got here. But there we go. Now we can focus on the main lot of the cards. But anyway, now we've gotten it sorted out for that. Um, so we've got Bark Girl. Obviously, it does the same as every other bloody starter. Uh, you know, ride and draw. I personally just prefer Bart Goal. Um, obviously, you remember back in the day, um, Bart Goal was actually the starter that was part of the Soul Saver Dragon back then. Because uh, obviously, it got you five cards and sold pretty quickly. Uh, so, it's also that. Now, obviously, we have our four Soul Saver Dragon. <coughs> if you don't know what the card does, Soul Blast uh, 5, give 6 units 15, and then you can attack. And uh, when you attack, you can Soul Charge 1, which for me, it seems to be Soul Charge 1 critical trigger. Or, well, Soul Charge A trigger, pretty much. Um, but yeah, it, it's pretty much how you win the game. You want a high roll, ideally, just to get to that point just to try and finish them off however it's like um it's pretty much it, it it's really actually hard for some decks to guard um actually believe it or not it's quite it's quite difficult more difficult than you think oh anyway, we have uh three palamedes so palamedes actually is technically it, it's your combo piece for the win con because soul Dragon dragons are really really great on the fact that it gives 15k to everything so 30k columns if you want to put it that way however you know sometimes that can still be guardable and you need to ramp it up well palamedes is your friend because not only on place via ride or rear guard but ideally rear guard you will actually get to soul charge which is quite nice um so it helps you with getting to that if you've only got four cards and soul but he also gains um Basically, plus 5,000 per Soul Blast, which is really quite nice. Um, yeah, so um, if you Soul Blast 5, it gets an extra 25k. So it's pretty, pretty good. <clears throat> I, I personally think uh, Palamedes is mandatory for Soul Saver decks. It, with a Force 2 marker, it, it's killing. Now, I know there's some... Now, okay... So there's another card that's used which is called Hengist and if you look back to an earlier profile um, that was way before he was released I used, because um, Hengist is what you use normally um, I used Excapate in my original version and I then used for this version which worked out surprisingly well uh, obviously it doesn't have the ama most amazing kill shot as Hengist but it's nonetheless it's a kill shot but they might go back to Excavate for it but not beating around the bush Alfred Early so I know Alfred Early is obviously contradictory to Soul Saver so you're probably thinking why well okay so the reason I, I kind of took out Excavate was because I was hating the idea of having a grade 4 in hand that was really pretty much just dead however um, this I was kind of looking at it and I was like, well, okay, well, Hengist is better, but Hengist unfortunately has got one brick problem, which is Soul Blast 2 Grade Freeze. And if you don't get those two Grade Freeze in Soul, you have to do it by, by normal riding. By that point, in this current meta, I think you're going to most likely die. So I went, well, let's put in Alfred Early. Alfred Early's requirement is only a Blaster Blade from Hand or in Soul. So not only will it draw you an extra card, but also it's the extra 10k. And obviously you get an extra force marker and 
it, it, it basically it's like a if you can't pull Soul Saver off again, it's a backup. And under, and actually at the day it wasn't needed, but it did come in clutch once, uh, which was quite nice. And actually done a lot better than I thought. So I'm going to keep it up with Alfred early and see how um, things can go. I might go back to Excavate because I, well, I had theorised Excavate. I never actually did play test it. And Hengist is a good card. I've only got the one at the moment. Need to. Well, actually I've got a play set. I've got one that I know where that is. I've got no idea where I put the other three. <clears throat> if you're running the Hengist build, you can run from two to three. I find personally, um, I find only two really is fine. Uh, cause you'll see it more than you need to for its effect to actually be useful. Now, here's where the deck's gonna differ from most, probably. Uh, and it is our good friend Blaster Blade. Let's uh, get down there a bit. So you're probably thinking why for Blaster Blade. Now, obviously, Alfred, uh, obviously because of Alfred Early, you probably thought Blaster Blade been there. But the, the the reason why Blaster Blade is there is more for the control aspect. Because the, this deck does actually Soul Charge quite a bit more than it used to because of how much Royal Patterns have changed with our Soul Charge capabilities. And again, from the old build that I had, I was more trying to abuse the on crit pressure of Blaster Blade, which I think a lot of people do take for granted. Because Soul Saver is only as good as the damage you have dealt them. If you have one damage, Soul Saver is not going to kill them. It's going to weaken them, but it's not going to kill them. And you need it to be able to kill on your first, uh, ideally your first um, grade 3 ride. So, with this case scenario, I, if possible, Mind you, if possible, I try to abuse the critical of Blast Blade to try and get them to free potentially four damage. So by the time I ride grade three, you know, then boom, it's good. And it adds also when I do it with Alfred early a nice little control aspect because at that point I've changed game plan from Soul Saver to Alfred, which means I can use his extra retirability to potentially retire something. Um, that would be an interceptor that could stop me from my initial kill push. So yeah, there's that. <coughs> right. Uh, our next, our next card is a Kane. So we got four Kane. She's back. Um, basically, Cat Blossom One Core Pongle. My boost of High Beast. When a high beast is um, boosting it, her she gets an extra three k. It's just a nice twenty one k boosting with the pongo and potentially more because of pure bright pure bright angel. So it's kind of really nice just to have that alone. Akane is mandatory uh, for its always overboard. Just being able to get the combo pieces to get what you need. Um, yeah. There's not much you really can say about it, but she is a mentor, and she's very, very good. Um, now, as you, if you guys have been watching my content and saw the original Soul Zero build, you'll remember there was a card called Funogol, which, if by the way you don't want to go into Blast Blade, I'd recommend just replacing him with Funogol. And Funogol was what I was running, however, there was a card I didn't know about, um actually at all and I remember playing it on EX and someone ran this card and they were playing a Gansalot build and this card was Loading Angel. I'd never seen the card before and then this person done it and basically drew two cards and I was like oh my god what the hell does this card do? And so uh, you know I I, um, I looked up the card and I, I, I couldn't remember I didn't know its name and then I asked a bunch of people and they were like hey it's called this and I was like oh cool boom so I checked that, and yeah, it's part of Grid. So if you're a Yu-Gi-Oh fan, you'll get that. <coughs> so yeah, um, it, it's the, the the downside to it is is you've got to have five cards, five units, right? So it, I'm just going to double check if it says other. No, it doesn't say other. So it's got the it's got the restriction of Pure Bright Angel. The whole if you have 
um, five units. I'm just going to double check. Pure bright was five. Yeah, it's five as well. So you can have your vanguard and uh, your vanguard and four other rearguards. But the restriction is you do need five units to do it. But however, that in Royal Paladin isn't that real big a deal because we do. Because I mean, think about it. You ride, let's say, Blaster Blade. You call a Kane, get a Pongor. If you've already got. I know, pure bright angel, boom, called that, called this loading angel, you've got that already. You've probably called down just three units, but with your drive check and as well as him, you've kind of just broken even, so there you go. It's a pretty freaking good card, and I can't believe it escaped my grasp. Um, but I'm so glad I got it now, and um, while Fenogol is well good, um, this gives me more of a hand advantage, uh, which will help with me sustaining the long game if I have to which obviously is not preferred in Royal Paladin but if it happens it happens um, we have four Pongol, Pongol is absolutely mandatory because obviously we've got a Kane so I want to um, call it but also just being a non-place and soul charging is important it literally is the best thing about it is just the fact that it's a non-place soul charge obviously it's got to be placed in the same column but the convenience factor of just soul charging really really quickly um you can't you can't beat pongo it's too good uh though it does get 5k power if you hit a trigger in there but uh it kind of really doesn't happen that often actually or at least with me it doesn't um so i never see it but it, it is good if it does hit it at least because then that way you kind of get you if you get it you get it and then it helps, you know, for the extra push. But ideally, you want to be soul charging, not really that triggers. And actually, the one thing about Pongo, just going to quickly go on it, is with this deck actually as a whole, is you're soul charging so much that it's allowing you to deck thin in a way. So it allows you to hit your triggers more, which kind of makes this deck more deadly. Okay, let's just continue on. So we got uh, four pure bright unicorn. So unicorn's restriction is you need three front row units, which can include itself for the soul charge. <coughs> and then it gets 5k if you've got four, uh, sorry, five or more units, like Gloating Angel. <coughs> sorry, guys, I've got a bad cough, so if you hear me coughing, that, that's why. Um, but yeah, so... It's quite nice, it's basically similar to Pongo, it's just a straight up soul charge, which is this deck is pretty much just wanting to do, it's just wanting to soul charge as quickly as possible. And now we're gonna show you Indestructible Knight Irina, I think. Irina, yeah, I think that's how you pronounce her name. Uh, and she is not an RPG. But she is our draw discard PG. And what I mean by that is when you write her, um, she will draw a card and discard a card. Um, this is actually really kind of important to have as your first ride as much as possible, which is thing you don't really think about, but basically you use Bark Gold skill, you draw a card, and then you use her skill, draw a card. It's just that extra engine to dig into your combo pieces better. Which is why it's quite nice and actually she's really, really good. Um I never really realised how strong she really, really was until until now. And obviously, perfect cards are really good. Anyway, I really wish she had, like, kind of a double R, kind of art. So I really think that her art is quite good. But obviously, it's a grade 1 PG, so... You know, them doing hollow grade 1 PGs would be quite, quite rare to see, I think. Okay, so... Obviously, you know, four Flogal here, you know, that's four crit, boom, it's an extra four crit, that, ma crit. that makes eight, oh look at that, twelve crit, yeah, and then obviously, um, four heal, yeah, so that's really the trigger lineup, it's quite basic. Basically, the reason you're running 12 crit is because drawing cards and stuff like that and trying to survive a long game is quite 
important if possible. However, only to some extent. I find personally from my perspective, um, it's actually a lot better that you... It's better that you try and run the 12 prep broad purely because it will give you the... It will force you to kind of... <clears throat> um, to it'll for, it'll Basically, once they kind of start realising you're running 12 crit, if they do, you're going to be forcing a lot of guard out of them because they're worried about that potential crit. Um, yeah, so I'm going to quickly just go over my matchups and then... Um, Depending on how long the video is, I'm just going to go into a couple combos. It's really basic. Like, it's super, super basic, like, honestly. The stat, which is Royal Paladin on me, which is bad. So, kind of going on matchups. Round one was Mordred, um, which was very interesting. I um, I beat that quote. Oh, yeah, just noting it was 20, uh, 20 players. I believe it was 20 players, and it was, um, it was best of one. Just quoting that first. So, Mordred, I beat it. Um, I I went first. I run the high roll. Uh, I went performed my soul save a turn, <coughs> and then he was like, "Boom!" I do more dread, and then Mordred was like, "Do do do," and that was really it. Like Mordred just he he done his things. He done his re stands, but it wasn't really enough. There we go. Let's get get a bit of a bigger picture now. Um, there you go. So yeah, he was just going for it. It was quite nice. Um, that he tried, but he, I just I was on two damage. And I took it all and I went straight to five, and then I just killed him next turn. Um, yeah, it really wasn't much. Um, he could really do. I think I think that me just being able to take him straight to five on my first soul saver turn just pretty much ended it for him because he didn't have the rear of hand to. To really force uh, me towards game. Um, then second game was Melody. Melody was it quite interesting. Um, that deck still moves pretty fast. Oh my god! And yeah, it just boom killed me. I didn't even get a chance. Um, yeah, he high rolled. <laughs> Hate to put it that way, but he high rolled, and I was fine going second. But uh, because he just went first and he went to grade three first, I couldn't. I. I if, if I went first, the, the guy legit said to me, if I went first, I would have won because just the this just the, the problem is with, with uh, melodies, they have all these grade threes and they kind of can't really guard with them much um, until they're on grade three. And obviously, if I went first, boom, I just win at that point. You know, I had it ready. <clears throat> um, and then round three... Um, my round three was Vanquisher, um, so that was interesting. I would love to say, oh man, it was all skills. It was the most amazing um, I've ever played. And in fairness, I, I did play well to me understanding the knowledge of the deck. Um, but however, I will not deny I sacked him pretty freaking hard. It was like on grade two, I'm like attack with blast blade, and he's like. No guard, drive check, crit. I get him to free damage at that point, and in in that turn, and then he. So at that point, when I put him to free, he um, goes onto his turn. <coughs> he goes for Vanquisher. Um, so no, he go he goes up to grade two because I went first, and I soul savored him anyway. And then after that soul saver turn, he goes Vanquisher, makes his push. And he calls out his board, he swings, and I get a damage trigger, and he just conceded his entire game. He just conceded, and that was it. Um, so that was not the way I was expecting to beat Vanquisher first, but oh well, that happens. And then next game after that was Riviere, and um, I, I high-rolled that one. Uh, went to uh, Soul Saver first, and he was on grade 2, and he just didn't have the, the shield power to... To guard me, and since I, and since um, and since I got that crit on that grade two, um, with blast blade, uh, he, he went straight to four that he went in that turn. I, I took him to four damage, um, and then he was. No, so I took him three. 
It was four or three damage. I don't know. I think it might have been three damage actually. Um, oh yeah, yeah, it was three damage. I'll tell you how I remember it now. Because uh, it's been a couple of days. I'm trying to remember off memory here. But what happened was is he goes, Blast Blaze not swinging with crit, right? And I said, yeah, not yet. And I drove Chick a crit. And that was quite funny. I was like, oh, God. The psychoalia was it was real. And, um, yeah, and then Akane was there with Pongo boosting. So, yeah, I dealt him three damage that turn. And then he was like... So he was kind of like fine going for his turn. He goes in. He goes into Lissolette and then, like calls a card and off her, off her skill and then what what was so cool was using the uh freaking grade two um Riviera to like, to ride over it and draw and I was like oh man that's so good and then I went Soul Saver Dragon and I called out Palamedes it was like an 85k Palamedes to swing at him force two um and he he he, he no guard he couldn't so I swung the Vanguard and he couldn't guard the Vanguard you see so uh I yeah, you know, and I got a crit on that, and then I swung with Palamedes. He just couldn't guard it. Uh, he had too many five Ks, if, if I'm honest, to, to put it that way. He had too many five Ks. Um, and then we went into Vanquisher for our final one before top eight. Um, and basically, in in with Vanquisher, I didn't know really what to do with it. I high rolled. Again, just trying to think. Was this one? Yeah, this was. This was. It. No, sorry, I did not high roll this one. No, I will tell you, what, I remember that one actually. Particularly, it's quite weird trying to remember all these matches when they've happened quite a little bit ago. Um, and I remember it now because he was on grade three when I was already trying to when I was making my push. Um. Because I remember one of his guards he did that he was only able to do just because he was on grade 3. Um, yeah, so basically the idea was is that um, I, I went to grade 3. His bind wasn't that big a deal reality when he went there first. Um, I I basically did my soul's overturn and went for for it, trying to kill him off. And his three damage checks, his three, um, so his his third, his third, fourth, and fifth damage were all the draw PG, and I was pretty freaking salty. I'll be honest with you. The guy watches this now. First of all, I hope I'm remembering our match right. Um, so if not, let me know. But um, I think I, I think you went first. I'm going by memory here. Um. But yeah, then, um, so I, yeah, let me, let me try and remember it. So it was, after that, I mean, I was salty, he went for his turn, he had, like, mass multi-attacking, and I guarded it all and went straight to five damage. And then I couldn't pull off, I couldn't pull off another soul saver. I don't know if this is when I rode Alfred early. Might have been. Um, but I, all I can remember off the top of my head was I moved one Pongle up, uh, Pongle, up to the front row because it was at the back. And I swung with my Vanguard and I drove check a critical because he was on, because he got a, a hit, because he got a heal, right? And basically I had one unit with a Force 2 and my, and whatnot. And I basically knew that with the, with the two that I had, um, but my two current um, units were forced to, because I think every road. I remember having two units of forced to at the time. Um, I knew guaranteed he would, he would want to guard those because he'll die otherwise. And I had to get I had to bank on um, having Pongal um, get an extra crit, and which I did drive check and I drove check a crit gave uh, gave it the extra power, swung it with it, and he he didn't have enough to guard. He was at 5k short. Now, I hope the person is watching this because if you are, mate, um, can you remind me if I used Soul Saver's skill that turn? I think I had enough to do it, but I'm not. I think from my memory. So I remember someone saying 55k. 
okay, it's not Pongo attacking for, so that would only have happened with Soul Saver. So just by that memory alone, I think I pulled off Soul Saver's skill again. So yeah, if you're watching this, can you confirm on that? But if not, yeah, no worries. But either way, it was a win, and I was quite happy about that. Uh, and then top eight was Vanquisher. I low rolled, and I opened up with only grade ones, and basically lost. <laughs> so yeah, I I couldn't. That that game literally went all against me. I was I was done. But nonetheless, I I I got top eight with this deck, and um, I'm I'm quite happy about it. Nonetheless. I uh, was just going to show you a quick combo, well basically the, the general idea of your win con as it were. Um, so, because it's a warden now, it's a bit odd. We're just going to say... Five cards in soul, all triggers because that's my luck. Uh, I'll give you the most common version that generally happens so this is the most common version um, that you're gonna get and then uh, with your Palamedes you're gonna slap this lovely force T marker Right underneath. Boom. Now, with um, with this setup particularly, it's not pretty much matter which one, but you want to have pure bright unicorn at least behind Palamedes. This is the most common build I, I board I did get. Pure bright um, gets the extra five k, so it becomes twelve k. So it makes Soul Saver just have bigger numbers. Um, and obviously you want to try and just, you know, double crit and win the game. <laughs> Pretty much your Royal Paladin is crit, crit for the game, crit to win. Um, now there is something you can kind of do, which is what I did a lot of the time. Now, I know some people might disagree with it, and in fairness, if you do, I don't blame you, because it's kind of makes sense. But... I sometimes in, in situations I put Loading Angel behind. And the idea was behind it is that I kind of if I if I knew I could so that, that for the situation where I did do it, um they were on five damage and I knew that. And I kind of like when I looked at Palamedes, Palamedes was hitting for eighty five K. Um and I knew for a fact they wasn't going to be able to guard it. But what, so why there was attack with Soul Saver with Loading Angel behind, and it, obviously I can't boost. But any triggers I do, I got onto Palamedes, and if I got an extra crit, whatever, or any form of power I could put on a Carne or Blast Babe, whatever it was, and then just having that CB one. If they don't die, CB one put them in Soul and draw two. So it's just a nice little way of doing it. But yeah. But yeah, that's uh, my deck profile, guys. Um, well, I'll hit in 30 minutes. Hope you enjoyed, obviously, showing you a nice uh, two little combos, kind of, just showing you a bit of a board and whatever. Um, the deck's quite entertaining. Um, I think Soul Save is quite underrated. People don't really seem to realise that, that something that gives 15k to um, grab everything is really deadly and also. One people do tend to forget is that in this game, at least with the meta, I find they take a quite a bit of time to, to ramp up and get to their real kill game. So with Soul Saver Dragon, it's pretty fine because Soul Saver Dragon's got that. If you go, if their deck's not strong enough to kill you when when they go do, go first grade three, you can still kill them on your grade three. 
Anyway, I'm sorry for a random cut there, but anyway, I'm just going to end it off here. Um, because my camera decided to stop. Um, I mean, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed um, this full recording of uh, my deck profile and whatnot. And I'll see you all very soon in the next one.